Anna Sokolow joined Martha Graham's first professional dance company as a dancer in 1929 and went on to become a pivotal international choreographer. She pioneered dance that commented on social and psychological issues of contemporary life. From her early works in the 1930s that dealt with the Depression and the rise of fascism to themes of detachment and isolation in the 1960s, Sokolow combined music, dance, and theater to communicate with her audience. Steps of Silence was created in 1968 for Repertory Dance Theater. It was described by Clive Barnes of the New York Times as disturbing and impressive, and by critic Walter Terry as a work which will leave its mark on your heart. the 60s, you know, that was a, a period of intense social, political questioning. Um, there was so much going on in the world politically. There were so many events that were catastrophic and uh, uh, we, we, felt, we felt connected artistically to the times through our dance. And I don't think we necessarily thought we're going to make a political statement, but we're going to make an artistic statement that is, many, is very meaningful for us right now. So Anna came out in June of 1968 and created a new work for us. This was a piece about um, oppression and her methods to try to help you understand what that's like uh, were psychologically difficult for many of us. She asked the women, have you been raped? And, uh, you know, to be in class or in rehearsal and be asked that was, was rather shocking. Uh, you know, what, what, what kind of pain have you gone through? What do you know about the world? Um, uh, she really made us question everything. She, she, she wanted extremes, absolute extremes physically, which are really beautiful to look at. I mean, as we just looked at the, the tape, the old tape, and making people go to their, their absolute extremes and saying, I don't believe you. And um, you kind of go, well, you're right, because I was holding back. <laughs> and you, she knew. She always knew. Dang. <laughs> she always knew. Good. There you go. There, there it is. That's it. Try to get way back as far, up with the head as far as you Yes, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I need to go back to the score when she yeah. puts his hand on his head. Okay. All and right. she's running away. She's got her right hand on one side and her left hand on one side. One side of what? His head. <laughs> C for kaput, kaput his head. <laughs> Both hands are grasping his head. The sides? It doesn't say. It can be anywhere. Okay, so we have there's an there's an issue for me in the fact okay. that he, he does he does two head swings. Yes. Okay. The, the way she's got him, it's he's so tight. There's no movement there. Okay. I know. So we need to figure out where where on the head so that he can do what he's supposed to do. Okay. The process of reconstructing steps of silence on the company was such a fascinating process. 
I had been through the process of working with Anna Sokolo. I had uh, torn the movement from my blood and guts, <laughs> and I had a muscle memory of it. About leaning forward or not on the arms? Yes, yes, yes. In this beginning, when you, when you do this. But each dancer uh, that performed alongside me also had their memory, and, they, and each memory was different. And then we approached the work from uh, the point of view of the score. And the score was created on a different company, at a different time. And Anna would do things differently working with a different company. And so the, the version that uh, Valerie Maccabee set uh, so beautifully was in some ways a different version of the dance. So right away, my memory and the score had some moments of difference, which we discussed. And then the third voice came in, Laurie May, who had worked with Anna for so many years. And in a way, she was the middle ground, which said, I understand Anna doing this at this moment, and I understand Anna doing that at that moment. I think what works for this moment is this. And that was a beautiful way to work. That was what we had to do to bring the dance into life at that moment. Today, Anna Sokolo, there are so many uh, dancers who don't know her work. They know her from a history book. Uh, they don't know of her passion, uh, her techniques, the way she could pull ideas and work out of you, the way she made you stand up and look in the mirror at yourself and come to some conclusions that would make you a better performer, a better dancer. Uh, she also was someone who spoke about her time, about politics, about social issues in a very powerful way. And um, I think there are audiences and dancers today who uh, do not look at dance as a medium for social commentary, that don't look at dance as a way of really expressing powerful ideas. Um, and I think that it's very important that the work of Sokolo live on to show people that, um, that tool, that voice, that power uh, that dance has. Uh, hopefully for making comments and make and waking people up.